The TCU Horn Frogs check in at number 24 in our rankings of the best wing groups in the country this season. Riley, you had the 19th. I think you were the highest one on the Horn Frogs uh, of the four of us who voted in this consensus. What is it about this group that gives you some some faith in them being a top 20 unit in the country? There's a lot of players in this group who just look like Jamie Dixon guys, so to speak. They're gritty, they're athletic, they're going to get on the glass, they're going to, like, on both the offensive and the defensive, and I think there's a potential star in Trezarian White. So that was why they cracked yeah. the top 20 for me. Um, I'm excited to talk about them. There's some interesting pieces, and I kind of think, like, Jamie Dixon has done a good job of finding these. I mean, Trezarian White, I wouldn't really say White was an unheralded transfer. He, he, it definitely felt like there were several big time schools on him when he entered the portal. But as a whole, I would say Dixon's done a good job of finding these like under the radar guys who seem a little random on the surface and then turning them into a tournament caliber teams. So, well, let, let's talk about White because he was a star for you into Wilmington last year, average 20 a game. Uh, in 30 minutes, nearly seven rebounds as well, 40% from three. Like he's, he was a bona fide star for UNC Wellington last year, obviously making the jump to the Big 12 and TCU. There are questions there, but what what is it that has you so excited about his game? He's a freak athlete. Like if you watch, I can't remember who it was against, someone in the CAA who he threw, he threw down a windmill dunk in game. Anytime you do a windmill dunk in game, I'm going to be a fan and buy into your pedigree, even if you're not that good. So, uh, but I think he's really good at getting to the rim. Um, uh, you mentioned the seven rebounds a game. He was top 25 at his conference and offensive rebounding rate as well. Uh, gets to the free throw line a ton. Uh, the only concern I have for him was really just like at in the, the CAA, was he just able to overpower guys who he was stronger than um, or more athletic than? Cause he's not, the, he's, Six seven listed at one ninety, so he's not super bulky, but I would still probably guess at a lot of better strength than a lot of his defenders uh, at the mid major ranks. That's the only concern I really have. Like moving up a level, is that going to translate? Because you know, like you said, thirty seven percent from three, only took fifty one last year though. He's not. He's more of like a downhill driver. At the same time though, like can Jamie Dixon teams ever really shoot? My no. answer would be no. Yeah, no. so it's like, it's a perfect fit. He, he really is a great, great fit for, for what Dixon likes to do. Yeah, he he's he's skilled and he fits. Like, I think fit for up transfers matters as much as your ability. White is certainly talented and skilled. This gives him a real chance to succeed and maybe not duplicate what he did for the, the Seahawks. I'm not expecting him to suddenly average 20 a game in the Big 12 and be an all-conference kind of performer, or first-team all-conference kind of performer. But I think that there's a, a scenario where he is a quality starter in the Big 12. And we'll mm -hmm. get to production projections here at the end of this video. Let's talk about Brandon Wenzel, though. Uh, he came over from Wyoming, also in this, this transfer class, six-man transfer class. Uh, these are the only two, though, that are going to classify as wings. The other four are the backcourt. He was productive for Wyoming, same – kind of mold. He played 36 minutes per game. He was pretty indispensable for Wyoming as a six foot seven wing. A lot of had to do with the shooting 38% mm -hmm. from three. Do you think he can provide a similar role for the Horn Frogs? Yeah. He's sort of like the Travion Tennyson replacement. Um, Tennyson, I think he was a, yeah, he came up from Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Yep. It's a lot better than I think most of us expected. Like I remember, you know, Thinking TCU had top 30, top 25 potential last year, but it uh, Tennyson was sort of an afterthought. It was all about Manuel Miller, Jameer Nelson, Micah PV. Um, Tennyson played a huge role for them, and I think Wenzel should offer something similar with a bit more size because he's, he's listed at 6'7". Yeah, I, I think so. Tennyson, when TCU had their biggest wins last season, Tennyson was a big reason why in those games because he provided the shooting, provided some of that spacing. If Wenzel could come in and do that, like you're going to give Frankie Collins room, Trezarian White some room, Deshaun Alette some room to do some things in the middle. It it opens everything else up, right? That's a, that's a big thing for him there. Um, well, let's move on to some of the freshmen because the other guys who are going to make up this wing rotation are going to be freshmen. It's just a matter of which ones really contribute. Micah Robinson is the one who's the more highly touted four-star prospect number 81 and the on three rankings, uh, six foot six. What is it you like about his game? Well, once again, he's, he's one of those players you watch. And it's like, that's a Jamie Dixon guy. He's 
got good length, competes hard on the, on the glass, um, pretty athletic as well. And I, I mean, I know Oak Hill isn't what it once was, but I, I do like to, to have a guy with that pedigree at least playing against really high level high schools across the country. Absolutely. And having this, that kind of toughness again, with the amount of transfers and experience that's on this roster, this team projects to start four or five seniors, right? There's going to be some, some youth that comes along, but somebody who has that kind of, as you said, Jamie Dixon mentality, uh, toughness and just the, the unrelenting motor, it's going to mean something. Jace Posey may be thrown into a role here as well. He was actually the number 81 overall prospect in the 247 rankings last year. Redshirted this past season, projects to, to come into the fold here. What do you like about Posey's game? Posey is super bouncy. Like his his highlights um from like his, on the EYBL circuit from I guess last or two summers ago. Uh, it's a lot of catching lobs, a lot of a lot of cuts. Um I mean, there's one one of the one of his highlights at his tape with his is EYBL team he literally caught caught a lob midair and turned and like reverse dunked it so um yeah I don't with these guys again it's like how much are you actually going to expect them to produce more than just attack attacking off of one to two dribbles crashing the glass giving you some offense maybe on cuts getting easy dunks or something like I'm not expecting them to either be big producers but I I just don't think it's ever a bad idea to have long athletic wings on your team and you know, having yeah. those guys as depth depth pieces, I would say, also factored into you know me being higher on the Horn Frogs as a whole with the with their unit. Yeah, and and those long athletes, that's what Jamie Dixon likes. That's that's what his style of play lends itself to. The way they like to get up and down, that's going to bode well uh, for Posey and Robinson, I think. Also, I think Jace Posey Posey's dad is James Posey. Is it? That would make sense. I'm pretty sure. TCU fans, if there are any who watch the channel, uh, let us they're know. All, yeah, they're all um, watching the channel now. <laughs> oh yeah, it is J- James Posey's son, Jace. All right, List, listed at uh listed at six. Wow, he's only listed at six four as of two years ago. Maybe he had a growth spurt. Cause that, what is the? We say, we say six five now. We okay, say six five. Grew a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter Posey Supreme, very nice. Jace, yeah, we're looking he's... for. Looking for good things from you. Um, for me, I, I kind of touched on this. We're going to talk about the biggest strength of this group overall because because this quartet is the group that projects to make up you know, the, the wing rotation for TCU. May get a guy thrown in for a little bit here and there, or some spot minutes, but, but these four project to make up the core of that. I think it's their ability to attack the basket, yeah. as you mentioned. Trezarian White, that's, that's what he does. Wenzel is going to be more of the shooter but he can certainly get to the rim as well. Posey and Robinson in transition should be, should be a lot of fun. And them coming off the bench, I think you can put them in for you know, four to six minutes at a time, just have them run up and down the court for a TV timeout, take them out for a TV timeout, and then put them back mm-hmm. in, ask them to do the same thing. This is a group that attacks the rim and gets out in transition. That's going to fit what TCU wants to do and be fun to watch. Yeah, I, I think – the mine was going to be the athleticism because again, you look up Trezary White, you look up Jace Pose, you look at Micah Robinson. All of them have these highlight reel dunks in their bag. Like there's literally one of Jace Posey jumping over somebody. I'm like, <laughs> I know I said he's not going to be that productive, but like having the NBA bloodlines, it always gives me an extra boost in your mind. Maybe Posey's going to have a little breakout year off the bench for the. For the we'll frogs. see. I mean, he's 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 got the pedigree. He's got the pedigree right now. Weakness for this group. Like there's, there's a question. What's that question? It's gotta be three point shooting. What it always is for TCU. And I know like, I'm sure Wenzel's going to shoot it at a high clip. Uh, not so much for like literally anybody else on this roster. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I think that's maybe Vashana. Think... Maybe Vashana let can shoot. He's again, a guard, not a wing, but I, I think Vashana Allett is awesome. And, um, he, I think if there's a breakout candidate on TCU, it's him. Uh-oh. But we're talking about wings here. Mine is not so much the shooting. I do think that's a concern, but I think there are enough capable shooters here, certainly in relation to what TCU has had. Mine is the level of production you're going to get from these guys because Posey's coming off a redshirt year. Robinson's a freshman. You're going to be relying on them to do something off the bench. Jazarian White was awesome at UNC Wilmington. 
Dallas is not UNC Wilmington. Now, White produced against the better teams that UNC Wilmington played, so I do not necessarily have doubts that he is a good pickup, but is he somebody that you can kind of rely on to be one of your top two or three guys? Because Mm -hmm. TCU picked him up to be one of their top two or three guys. If he's not that, that significantly lowers his TCU ceiling. Brandon Wenzel, I'm I'm not as concerned about the jump from the Mountain West to the Big 12 because the Mountain West has been a very, very good league for the last couple of years. But again, you're you're going to a much more physical Big 12, and you're going to be asked to play the four, most likely. How do you hold up in a, a bigger league, a more physical league? Like, to me, it looks great on paper. Mm-hmm. But there are significant questions about what it looks like on the court from just historical perspectives and historical jumps that, that guys are making. We'll see. I think in a vacuum, I look at each one of these guys and see it working. But I also see significant and legitimate reasons why it may not. And if it does not work for two of them, TCU may be in a, a bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still high on this group as a whole. Um, I think there's a good chance TCU will be ranked by like December. Uh, I don't know. It's a good group. So we can close by. I, I mean, you want me to go and give you my projection for Chazarian white and the rest of the guys for, I would, I would as, love as I'm to making these, need, making these I predictions. Love to. I'd love to. Yeah. I'll say white. I mean, just looking at this roster, I, I think he's going to be their leading scorer. I think he can give you 15 a game. Um, probably let's we'll say five and a half rebounds and an assist. Um, don't think that three point number is going to stay at like 39 ish percent where it was last year, uh, again, on the lower volume, but yeah, I'm, I'd say 15, five and one. Yeah. I think his three point number is going to drop to more like 33. I don't think he's going to shoot enough for it to be like a real issue. Right. Um, but I think it's going to drop. I think 15, I, do you see what I think should be thrilled with 15? I think you get more like 13, 13 and a half out of him where he's a good starter, but maybe not a star, right? I think you get that. I think he, you, you still get five, six boards. I kind of like where you're at with that. Um, but I don't know if he's going to be that top-end guy that TCU is, is hoping that he will be. Mm-hmm. Wenzel, I, I think the, the production is going to translate a little bit more. I think he, he's going to stay in double digits, somewhere around 10 and a half points. Uh, I'll, I'll stick with five boards. That's what he averaged last season. And... Pull up his three points and inch at about 39 40. I think he gives you about 38% from three, but I, I'll say he drops down from 12 points to eight and a half. So very okay. similar to Tennyson. Okay. What about Michael Robinson? I think both Robinson and Posey are going to give like four and a half, five points, um, probably th- two and a half, three rebounds off the bench. I think they'll produce very similarly. I could see that. I, they're not repetitive in their skill sets, but I think their production could be repetitive because they're mm-hmm. going to be asked to play kind of the same redundant role, right? At least that's what we project. We'll see what happens when we get to the season, um, but that there's a real, real shot that happens. Um, who's the who's the star? Is Jazarian White the the odds on clear obvious? Like if there's a star on this team, it's him. I I for sure think so. I think he's going to be the best player. Even with the concerns about, is it just based on his size and athleticism? Like in the CAA, can it translate up a level? I think it will. If he's the best player, where does he rank among the best players in the Big 12? Third team, all Big 12. Um, It's a reflection on how good the league is. And when I say like TCU, I could see them being ranked. I mean, really, aside from Mike Miles, they've had seasons where they're like, I would say the better part of the Jamie Dixon tenure at TCU has been like a, the sum is, uh, yeah, shoot, I'm gonna mess it all, mess it up. Sum is greater than its parts, whatever it is. Whole is greater whole than, the, greater sum than the, the sum of its parts. There we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that this group is probably the, I don't want to say it's going to sound bad. I think this is probably the, the worst team they've had in the last three years, but the last two have been damn good TCU teams. Yeah. Like, I think this team is a solid team, a tournament team. But if you're going to get to being where they were, where they're a consistent, like, top 15, top 20 team, I do think you need to see Trezarian White become a star. And I think he's the one in this group that can be. Guard play is going to matter a lot, though, with this team as well. I think the wings, you have guys who are going to fill some roles, some questions, certainly. Uh, But Trezarian White, name to know in the Big 12. It's that time, Cart. 
Football season is approaching, and you know exactly what that means. It means that we are both going to bet and bet a lot with our friends at MyBookie. Yeah, MyBookie is the best and premier sports book used by us over here at Sleepers Media. They have everything you need, Greg, with football season approaching. There's nothing I love more than looking at a nice Saturday slate and even leading into a little bit of Sunday, dipping into the NFL. But there's no better place to do it than with my bookie. And I think we got a great offer for the folks over uh, at my bookie if they want to tap in with us. We sure as hell do. And I'm going to tell you all about that offer. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the great benefits of betting with my bookie. My bookie is safe, secure. Most importantly, when you win, you get paid quick. If the first two legs of your parlay hit, cash out early, use those funds on another bet or let it ride for a chance at a bigger payday. With football season coming, they're going to have a bunch of great things in store for you, whether you're looking to bet futures game lines, player props, all of it is available with our friends at MyBookie, and you can get a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. There's a link in this description, promo code SLEEPERS with MyBookie. Make sure you get that 50% deposit match. Use those funds. Maximize your chances of winning as football season gets here, and we'll be there with you every single step of the way.